where does a person's community end? It all depends. It depends on his willingness to share in the mixture of progress and problems that go to make up the modern world. Yet willingness alone is not enough, for there is a fundamental skill without which no one can share in the development of society. That skill is the ability to read. Whether we want to share in the affairs of our neighborhood or our world, we must know how to read, and what is more, how to read well, with the speed and understanding that a complex, fast-moving world demands. Though reading is always among the first things taught in school, sometimes reading skill fails to develop. When that happens, difficulties arise which extend into almost every phase of life. Hey, come on, Harold, let's go. Oh. Say, you coming to the meeting tonight? Mm, I guess not, Mort. I have to stay home and study. Study? What were you doing just now? History. All this time? <laughs> yeah, why? Gee, I finished the history assignment and had time to work on algebra besides. Gosh, I didn't even get through the whole assignment. Well, why did you try and make that meeting? Well, the fellows never get a chance to see you anymore. Mm, better not, Mort, but I'll make the next one for sure. Well, all right. Hey, come on, let's get out of here. Harold Wilson didn't know just what his problem was. All he knew was that it wasn't very pleasant to be making low grades and to have no time for fun. His teacher finally asked his mother to come in for a talk. I'm glad you could come in to see me, Mrs. Wilson. Well, I have been worried about Harold's grades lately. Well, they aren't very good for a boy of his ability. I've been wondering, does Harold have many outside activities? Well, he used to, but that's just it. Lately, he's been spending so much time studying. Mrs. Wilson, suppose I arrange to send Harold to the reading clinic. They'll test him to see whether he's reading efficiently and help him if he isn't. The next time the clinic came to his school, Harold was there. The first thing they did was test his vision. No trouble there. Next, they measured his reading rate. Fairly slow for this type of material, 180 words per minute. And then Harold took a battery of tests designed to measure his vocabulary, his understanding, his general knowledge of the world, and to bring out his own particular interests. They checked to find out just how quickly Harold's eyes could see words and phrases. After the testing, Harold's card was completed and sent on to the clinic director. Yes, it all ties in. Lip movement, reading rate fairly slow, vocabulary below average, eye span short. Gee, that sounds pretty bad. Oh, it isn't too bad. But your tests show that you have above average ability and your reading is far below your general level. But what can I do, Mr. Winters? Oh, there's a great deal you can do, Harold. It's all summed up in this little pamphlet I'm going to give you to read. You follow the reading improvement program set down here. It won't be long before you notice the results. Now, the first step is to find a good place to do your regular reading. Harold started his reading improvement program by moving furniture. Come in. Well, what's going on here? It's part of my reading improvement program, Mom. <laughs> what has moving furniture to do with reading? Well, look, it says right here. The good reader finds a place to study and read that is free from distracting noises and interruptions. I have to study 15 minutes every day. <laughs> oh, I see. I'm going to move this chair now where I can be comfortable and have plenty of good light. I don't think this lamp will do you much good. Why don't you get that old reading lamp out of the basement? Gee, Mom, that's a good idea. I'd forgotten all about it. I'll get it right away. It didn't take Harold long to set up shop, but it did take him some time to learn one of the first and basic requirements of reading, concentration. There were some temptations. And there were some distractions. Hey, what's going on? Leave me alone.
But after a while, Harold was able to get down to the real work. He looked over the pamphlet the clinic had given him, skimming it first. Skimming was a technique he was to learn more about later. Then he settled down to work on the first major point, how to read rapidly. It wasn't easy at first. Harold had a hard time trying to keep from moving his lips. Lip movement slows down your reading because it forces your eyes to take in one word at a time. The amount your eyes take in at one glance is called eye span. He had a hard time, too, trying to keep his eyes moving ahead, trying not to look back, even when there were words he didn't recognize at first. But slowly, he learned to control his lips. And slowly, too, he found that his eye span was improving. His eyes were now taking in more words each time they moved. And he was able to keep his eyes moving forward. Now, Harold could sense that he was reading faster. To make sure, he began to keep a close record of his reading rate. First, he timed his reading of a short passage. It took nine minutes. Then he counted the words in the passage. There were about 1,820. 1,820 divided by nine minutes. Harold's reading rate was about 202 words per minute. That was about 20 words faster than the rate he had first gotten at the clinic. Harold was improving, and every new calculation told him that as he continued to practice, he would continue to improve. But Harold was careful not to expect the same reading rate with every type of material. Newspapers, he learned, can be read faster than stories. And stories can usually be read faster than study material. Some textbook passages just have to be read over and over again, slowly and carefully. On the other hand, he found out that you can skim through some things before you read to get a general idea of what is inside and to find out what you might want to come back to. In the course of a few weeks, Harold discovered that his reading rate for all kinds of materials had jumped considerably, though it varied with different types of reading. But meanwhile, other improvements were being made, too. Harold came to the second point of the reading program. And so he began to learn to use study aids, to look up names and words he didn't know, and to record his newfound information so that it became a permanent part of his knowledge. As these new habits became part of his life, Harold found that he had more time to think while he was reading, to ask himself questions about his work and to understand things more thoroughly. As he came into the third phase of the program, words began to string together in phrases, and phrases came together in pictures. Pictures and ideas about the world that Harold Wilson had never experienced before. Many days Harold had spent learning to control his lip movements, to increase his eye span and improve his vocabulary, and read with greater understanding, all this was beginning to change Harold's attitude toward things. Yet Harold himself hardly knew what was happening until one day when he was reading to the family. Reading aloud was part of the program, too. The speaker went on to point out that though Lincoln never had the opportunity for much formal education, he was a voracious reader. What does voracious mean? That means he read everything he could lay his hands on. And that's true, too. Lincoln was a voracious reader. How do you know? Oh, I read it somewhere. I read it somewhere. A statement that Harold Wilson could now make with confidence and with a definite show of pride. For now, he began to feel a certain friendliness with all kinds of written material. A friendliness based on his ability to read faster and to get more out of every word. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Ordhead. Hey, Harold, you hear they're going to close down the recreational center? Yeah, I heard about that. They don't seem to think we can take care of the jukebox and other equipment. They say it costs too much. Yeah. See, you guys, there was an editorial about this in last night's paper. It said it didn't cost half the amount the council claimed. Oh, yeah, I read that. Tell you what, Harold. The club wants to write a letter to the council, you know, study up on the history of the thing and find out how much it really does cost and what other recreation centers cost, too. 
course, it'll mean some library work. It's okay by me. I'll do it. Well, well, well. Uh, hi, Miss Vernon. Hi, Miss Vernon. Here, let's get going. Anyone can improve his reading if he is willing to work at it. Businessmen may learn to read in one hour reports that used to take three hours to read. Farmers may find through better reading a wealth of information in material they didn't have time to read before. Lawyers often want to improve their reading to keep up with new laws and court decisions. Even our fighting men are learning how important it is to be able to read well and easily. Acquiring this important skill, as Harold Wilson learned, is largely a matter of practicing a three-part program of reading improvement. The first phase is learning to read rapidly. This means learning to read without lip movement, to keep your eyes moving forward, and learning to increase your eye span to take in whole phrases quickly, without pausing. Improving your vocabulary is the second phase. Among other things, this means using study aids such as the atlas and dictionary. The third phase is understanding what you read, learning to get the meaning in what you are reading. Reading improvement doesn't come easily. It requires constant and careful practice. But keeping at it brings a worthwhile reward, the vast treasure house of man's printed knowledge, exciting stories of travel, books on hobbies and crafts, stories about people, places, and times. Most important of all, as Harold found, better reading shows the way to a fuller enjoyment of the everyday adventures of life.